Smith, who was voted the Big Ten's Defensive Player of the Week after his tremendous performance against Ohio State. He leads the front seven for the Hawkeyes. Scott Blake, he had the only interception. In fact, it was the only turnover that game last week in Columbus. They show blitz. Green behind the offensive line. Smith hits him on the release, intercepted by Teddy Joe Bailey, the linebacker, as Leroy Smith made the big play. Hartlieb is a 6'1", 205-pound junior out of Woodstock, Illinois. Played at Marion Central. Lou Montgomery, a fullback who is the leading receiver, will get a lot of activity, as will Mike Saunders, who just carried the ball, and the rest of his wide receivers. The offensive line did a splendid job against Ohio State, led by All-American candidate Rob Baxley. This is second and ten for Hartlieb. Coaches may be a little conservative with this quarterback here in the early going. Montgomery had a nice cut behind the right side. Mark Hagan, the leading tackler, brings him down for the Hoosiers. You notice how the crowd all went loo, loo, loo with him carrying the football. He's from his little city here, 85 miles away, number 34. They like the way he runs. He doesn't carry it very often, but when he does, he's very effective, as he demonstrates right here, and the fans do like him. Down. Well, I think they're going to go with what they call their whale formation. That's nine people on the line of scrimmage, four offensive tackles. Yes, that's what they've done. Now they'll check and run to the gap. Fumble! Fumble, Indiana recovers. Picked up by Farrell. Oh. The whale was harpooned. Second down for the Hoosiers. Green off play action from his end zone. Tackled for the safety. Did they score it or did he get out with the ball? He reached out with the ball and may have just avoided the safety with Wells again closing in, but it was very close. Here's their second fourth and goal of the opening quarter for the Hawkeyes. Hartley to throw for the touchdown to Saunders. Play action pass, fourth down, gutsy call by Hayden Fry. Fakes it in there. Now the tailback's out of the flat. All in all, no one picked him up. Here he comes. Normally, a linebacker or weak side corner in this formation would pick him up coming out of there. They didn't do it. They read run. Jeff Skillett attempting the extra point. And he puts Iowa up by seven points. It was a bad punt that set up that scoring drive. We'll be right back. They're throwing a play-action pass, and it's being defended by a two-deep coverage. And the receiver ran underneath the short coverage. It went to the deep corner here, and the safety, Gary Clark, read it perfectly and came over and picked it off. Gary Clark picking off his second interception for the year, his sixth one in his career. Heck, he had eight interceptions in high school. This guy's been intercepting footballs for a long time. Runs the delay with Saunders, and he weaves his way inside the 15-yard line. Time remaining in the first quarter. Saunders again, powering to the end zone. Touchdown, Iowa. Take a look at this coming right at you. How would you like to be the linebacker, have to make this play? Here it is. See, good hole right up there. Now the safety's got to get over there and make that play right there. He's got to get his shoulder pads into him and hit the man rather than just absorb the ball carrier. Mike Middleton didn't really stick him. Nice job, Lou Rock. What's up, man? Done oh. hard hit. Bill Mount took him down. They were a little bit confused on defense. Indiana came out with a two tight end set to try to balance the defense up. Defensive linemen were yelling at each other, and right prior to the snap, right prior to the snap, they started to shift. And you'll see Belima now right on the center's nose make that move to underneath, and they don't pick him up properly. And there he goes, getting the minus play. Green under intense pressure. Steps up, and it is intercepted again. This one by Eddie Pauly. The third turnover of the game by the Hoosiers. Trent Green has thrown three passes, and all three have been picked off here by the Hawkeyes. 
So Young Hart leave with an early cushion. And the ball again in Indiana territory, working to the sideline, and John Falloon. And Falloon, he is one of the coach's favorites. This week, Hayden Fry could not say enough complimentary things about the young control receiver that he has. He said, you know, he's a walk-on from that old bitty town up in northwest Iowa. That kid is 200% hard. If you would want one thing for your backup quarterback, it would be turnovers and an early lead. Iowa has that as the penalty flag comes flying. Saunders sprints to the end zone, but there's a penalty marker on the play. It looks too easy. This is against Indiana. Touchdown, Hawkeyes. Indiana's got to be shocked. Here they are. It's a deep handoff in the eye. Gets a good kickoff. Block there. Big hole up inside. Good push block. The middle linebacker overrunning it. And Williams, safety coming up to make the play. Damon Watts does not make the play. Damon Watts, the free safety, has to make that play. Stunned. It's about the only way the Hoosiers can sum up what's happened to them so far here. Remember, this is a team that went to Ann Arbor and pushed Michigan to the wall in the fourth quarter. And in the opening quarter here in Iowa City, Indiana finds themselves down by three touchdowns, all three scored by Mike Saunders. He has caught one, and now he has run in from 19 yards out. And it's actually the same type of play that he ran the nice play to the right just a little while ago. Now he runs it to the left. Might as well just keep running it until they stop it. There comes number eight, Leroy Smith. He's already twice this season been the Big Ten Defensive Player of the Year, and he's bidding for a third one. The secondary of the Hawkeyes doing a spectacular job of not allowing the Hoosier receivers to get open. So they set the screen with Dunbar, and he is tackled by Mike Wells, and number 64 has been a spectacular defensive player so far. Final seconds of the first quarter. A stunner here in Iowa City. It's all Hawkeyes. Now Green stepping up, gonna get hit from the blind side. Taken down by Larry Blue, and there's a penalty marker on the play. So on fourth and five, they're going to go. They've had difficulty with their punting game. They lead by three touchdowns. No reason to give it up here. Hartley over the middle, complete for the first down. Inside the 15-yard line, the always steady John Falloon. Remember last week in Ohio, the Buckeyes were able to get penetration in the middle of this kicking alignment of Iowa. Indiana will try to do the same thing here if they can and put a move on Skillet who will attempt a 26-yard field goal. Got that one up and good. Jeff Skellett's field goal makes it 24 0 Hawkeyes. Number 26 again. Good tackle. Nothing there. And Smith was among those hitting him along with Ron Gator. He's one of the better nose guards in the Big Ten. Dunbar on a cut back into daylight. No, oh, do the pros love moves like that to the 25-yard line. Hello. Well, here's third down, and Indiana is 0 for 5 on third down conversions against that Hawkeye defense today. Green throwing to the open receiver. Touchdown, Indiana. Thomas Lewis. Scott Bennell, an excellent kicker. And he pulled this one to the left. I don't know if the snap was real good, but he has pulled this one to the left, and I don't think Indiana can make any more mistakes no. than they have here in the first half. <laughs> so it's 24 to 6 after the, and the second missed the extra point. Washington, and in case you just turned on the set, Desmond Howard did it again. Got in the end zone against Northwestern in a Michigan win. Hartley breaks a tackle. Yeah, shows complete oh, to Falloon. 
a stunner in South Bend. Here's Montgomery, hole in the middle. He explodes to the Hoosiers, 42. There it's first and 10. Hartlieb hit by Miller as he releases complete. Close to a first down. Dane and Hughes covered by Richardson. Third and six. Hartley throwing Hughes. Reaches for a touchdown. He was belted into the end zone by the defender. So it was the second defensive player coming over who assisted him in getting into the end zone on that play as Skillet adds the extra point, 31 to 6. Hartlieb throws two touchdown passes here in the first half. This will be a 33-yarder. He's he's four for five from this distance, bro. Good, good leg. He's got a strong leg Ooh. right through. Yeah. Now it's 31 to 9. He's audibly. And he'll roll a little bit to the right to set the screen back on the other side. First down, Montgomery free, midfield. Montgomery out of bounds at the 38. Center Mike Devlin leading the way for Montgomery with a tremendous block. Saunders, 92 yards rushing today. His 21st carry of the game, and his fourth touchdown, Iowa! Either prevent the score or take the ball away. Neither one of those things happen. I just noticed that. <laughs> the Hoosiers are in trouble. No scoop there, right? It's 38 to 9. Second down. Crowd electric right now behind this defense. Dunbar can't get away from Gator. And the Irish aren't out of the woods yet. They got a tough one against Penn State. Green getting away. Smith won't let him. There's your sack leader, folks. Leroy Smith, number eight. And they based a good percentage of their game plan on ways to handle Leroy Smith. Fourth down against Indiana. Green rolling. Throw in. Touchdown, Indiana. He found Thomas Green Lewis. to Thomas Lewis for the touchdown. Going for two. They missed one extra point and kicked a field goal, so they'll go for two here. Dunbar short. Right. Hartley, their backup quarterback, rolling beautifully and hitting the tight end fumble. Inside the 35 to the 32-yard line. You know, Brent, I like handing the ball to Dunbar. <laughs> <laughs> Guess who's going to carry the ball? He's got it. Daylight, cut back, touchdown, Indiana. Dunbar. Can they? Touchdown. It's 38-21 right now. Ten and a half minutes to go. Indiana on the comeback here in the second half. The option... Green slips, trying to cut back. He slips, and it'll stay at 38-21. It is a 17-point lead, 10-39 to go. We're coming right back. Mysterious play occurred, and you folks out there, see if you can help us explain exactly what did happen to the football. Now, remember, this was back in the third quarter. Iowa was on the drive. It has disappeared, folks. <laughs> it is gone. The case of the vanishing football. 
the official gave it to the Hawkeyes. He's standing right there. He comes running right into your picture. Mr. Saunders doesn't have it. He doesn't have it. Miller, number 40, doesn't have it. <laughs> I don't know where it went. Strange things are happening. Uh, the second half, sending Thomas in motion on a fake to Dunbar. Green will be brought down at the 46-yard line. Mike Wells and Leroy Smith. <laughs> As Iowa starting to move closer to that holiday bowl. Here now is Saunders, over 100 yards, out of bounds at the 47-yard line. Hartleib oh. throws it right to the defender. Hartleib's first interception, and he threw it right to Hagen at midfield. You bet. Hawkeyes on the move. Got one more question for Hawkeye fans as Green goes long intercepted. Iowa's ball at the 14. That was Eddie Pauly, their fourth interception of the game. Now my next question is, folks, is the fact that the second place team going to the Holiday Bowl going to deny Iowa a chance for a national championship? <laughs> Eddie Polly fell off the uh, receiver to the right side of your screen, playing zone over there, drifted in, watching the quarterback's eyes all the way, picking off his first interception for the year. So one more crack at it. It was 31-6 at the half, Iowa. Indiana's first three passes of this game were intercepted. Iowa scored touchdowns, three of its first four possessions, and that was just too high a mountain for Indiana to climb. They have tried and tried again here in the second half. And now the last play of the game, unless there's another defensive penalty. So the Hoosiers with the last at bat. And Green firing away, incomplete. It's a 38-21 Iowa win. And our Chevrolet most valuable players of this game, courtesy of Margaret Schaefer, she says Thomas Lewis of Indiana, Mike Sanders from Iowa, Margaret, we all agree. And Chevrolet will donate $1,000 to each school's general scholarship fund to reward outstanding students for their academic achievements and to assist those in financial need. We hope you've enjoyed this one, and we'll be back for a final word.